Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm gonna be playing around with some textures on a landscape photo. And uh, I wanna walk through some tips, some tricks, some ideas and things like that and share with you kind of how I'm approaching that, uh, which has actually changed a little bit because of the most recent update to Luminar, which includes the merge layers function. I'll be using that in this video. And I'm also gonna be talking about my new texture pack. Uh, if you wanna take a look, it's there's a link down below it's rusted textures, there's 19 images, here they are, and I'm selling it for so cheap that it's almost like I'm giving it away. If I had a boss, I'd get fired for this kind of pricing. It's not gonna be at that price forever, it's just like an introductory offer and it's, uh, I made it that cheap just because I just like to thank you guys and try to offer something of value that's really easy to get or inexpensive for you because you guys do so much for me. So it's a bit of a thank you. If you're interested, check out that uh, texture pack down below and what I'm going to do is apply some of those textures to this photo because one of the things I like to do is if I'm out shooting is uh, when I'm coming back to edit is play around with uh, different creative ideas like this photo I could make it colorful for sure there's some nice color there's some blues and greens right but it's overcast so it's kind of boring it's not like a great sunset but it's a cool sky so you might look at it and think oh you could make a monochrome and make it really punchy and dramatic and yeah you could and maybe I will, but I also like to come in sometimes and just take textures and apply those kind of things to this type of photo because you can do some really interesting and fun creative stuff. And now that Merge Layers is in Luminar, it makes it easier and it's adjusted my workflow. So we're gonna jump into that. Now, if you take a look at the base photo, I use Develop Raw to lift the shadows, put on the highlights to lift the exposure. So it started like that and it's like that and I took out that annoying spot. But what I wanna do now is jump into textures which is over here in layers. Now I've already loaded, I'm gonna use three textures on this photo and I've already loaded them here in Luminar. So you just click plus add new layer. If you wanna add your own, you just click load image, it'll open a box, you go get the texture and that sort of thing. But what I'm gonna do is go ahead and stick this texture on first. This is rust number three. I have very, very interesting and unique and creative names for these. Rust one, rust two, rust three, etc. Anyway, this is, I believe rust three. Yes, it is. If you hover, the name will come up. Um, and you'll see it lays on top of the photo. Now, it fits perfectly because both the photo and the texture are in a three by two aspect ratio. If for some reason it uh, they don't match, uh, like if the texture doesn't fit, you can click fit, fill, and stretch in order to make it uh, do that. You also have the ability here to swap the uh, orientation, left, right, or up, down. But for me, there's really key uh, three, I should say, key ways that I blend the textures into the photo. That's with the opacity slider, the blend mode, and with masking. And we're gonna use all those in this video. The first thing I like to do is drop the opacity. And, and here I ended up going to about 26. The main reason I like to drop the opacity is because I wanna see the underlying photo better. Because at 50, which was like, you know, something like that, you're seeing half and half, right? It's at 50, so you're seeing half of each, but it's a little too much. So I like to drop it down, and I ended up uh, landing on about 26. Every image is different. It's an experiment. Move the slider, see what works for you. Uh, but the other thing I like to do is play with blend modes. Now, if you're not familiar with blend modes, I recommend Google searching if you want to really get into the details of them. But essentially, it's just a set of instructions that tells the layer you're on how to blend with the layer below it. So you can come in and as you hover, you get a preview. So you may not need to go explore these and learn the ins and outs because you see what they look like just by hovering. I'm a big fan of that. And like that looks pretty cool, really. But the one I ended up going with was actually called Hard Light. And I like what it's doing in the sky. It looks pretty awesome. But the other thing I mentioned I like to do when blending textures is use masks. And on a scene like this, I feel like there's already a lot of texture in the grass and the gravel and over here in the barn and stuff. So I tend to skip some of that. And so that's gonna be a mask and a linear gradient in this case. And I'm gonna make it a pretty wide linear gradient, meaning that the gradient zone, the fade zone, if you will, is pretty broad. So something about like that, where it's just dipping barely below the horizon and fading gently into that. And maybe I'll take that up a little bit more. But all that's doing is leaving the texture up there and making it fade uh, as it gets to here. And again, don't need a lot of texture in the foreground because it's already there. You can do it if you want. It's artistic. You do whatever you want. Um, and I really like these clouds here, and I don't want to totally hide them. So what I've done is stuck that layer on top. And if I turn it off, I could just hide layer. That was a right click. 
hide layer, there's my base photo, and then right click again, show layer, and there's my current state. Now, in the past, what I did was I would then make adjustments to this texture layer if I wanted to change color or add some structure or remove structure or blur it or whatever. And you can do that. Um, and it depends on the photo as to whether or not I would do that. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm a big fan of this merge layers capability because it gives you a lot of flexibility because what I like to do is stick my stuff together and then edit that as a combined image. That's what I'll be doing here. Just keep in mind, if you do want to edit uh, for whatever reason, you know, color, light, detail, whatever, uh, if you want to edit either of the texture or the base photo, just make sure you're on the right one. I'm currently sitting on the texture, so any edits I make in the filter stack will apply to the texture. And if I click that one, now they'll apply to the, to the base photo. But I won't be doing that. As I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and add another texture, so plus. And this time, I'm going to add this one, and that's Rust 13. Another original name. I told you, I, I, I don't know how I'd come up with uh, fun names for these things. Uh, but I take the opacity down. I'm at about 16, and I'm going to do another linear gradient. This time, I'm going to do a little bit more generous fade, and maybe something about like that. So, you know, uh, it's all experiments, my friends. It's art. You're doing whatever you want to do to your photos. Just play and have fun. Uh, but I also ended up going with the color burn. Uh, a blend mode because it looked pretty awesome. So there it is, color burn. So I'm kind of doubling up a little bit in the top part of the sky. So if I turn this off, you can see that's the before with the first texture layer. And then if I turn this back on, show, I've added a little bit more color and a little bit more texture to it. All I'm doing is stacking effects. That's really all this is. And it's quite simple and kind of fun, to be honest. Uh, but now I'm going to go ahead and jump in and uh, add another layer. So I'm going to go ahead and get that, and that will be this layer, which is my last one. And this is Rust 18, I believe. Yeah, Rust 18. Again, original names. I'm sorry. Uh, hopefully, uh, you're not uh, bored to death by my names, but they are they are kind of boring. Uh, but uh, in this case, uh, I, I go about 25 on opacity. And once again, I did color burn, uh, which I keep passing. There we go. Ooh, look at that. See what that... This is cool. I love that in the sky. And what I ended up doing is actually applying this to the whole image. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take that down just a tiny bit, maybe like a 22 or 21. Uh, I'm applying that one to the whole image, even though I just spent the last two textures telling you not necessarily that you need to put it here. And you don't need to put it anywhere, right? Um, but this one, it's not showing up a whole lot in the foreground. And because it's the only texture of the three that I'm applying to the foreground, I don't feel like I need to remove it as much. I think it looks fine there. But now I've got a pretty cool looking image and I'd like to go edit this. And so this is where I like to do the merge layers functionality. So what you do is you just make sure you click on whichever layers you're merging. I'm merging all of them. So I clicked on the top one, which was highlighted. And then I held down shift and I clicked the bottom one. And then I just right click and I click merge layers. And what it does is it goes through and it merges them together. So it sticks them all together, compresses them, for lack of a better term, into a single image that sits on top of your layer stack. And now I can go apply edits, which would be color grades, anything like that, to just that combined image. Whereas in the past, if I wanted to make color grades and edits to the photo, I would have to go do that individually in each layer or export the photo, re-import as a new photo, and then apply. Uh, so now I've got an image here, and that is my combined image, which I love this functionality because now everything that I do to the photo applies to the whole image. And this is my new canvas, for lack of a better term, that I want to work from in editing this final image. Okay, so usually the first thing I do is just open develop, and I go in and make some uh, typical adjustments. I just start playing with the contrast. And so I ended up going to like high 20s here, and I pulled on the highlights a bit, uh, about mid 50s, and I did not adjust the shadows, although I think that I actually will, just a little bit. And then I think I'm going to add a little bit of warmth, so increase the temperature slightly and increase the tint as well, because I do like to have a little bit of a tint. I like that kind of magenta, and I'm kind of playing up that look. Uh, and then I'm going to pull the vibrance down just a tiny bit so it's not overdoing the color. So just a little bit of a before and after here. Before and after, you can see it's had a nice little impact on the photo. But now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and click Develop again. And what I want to do here is a pretty typical move for me in a landscape. And that is, I just want to apply a linear gradient in the foreground and fade that across uh, a wide kind of swath of the foreground. And then I'm just going to drop the exposure a little bit. 
So this is just kind of framing the image and getting rid of a little bit of the um, emptiness. I mean, it's a road, so I got that line, but the line doesn't really lead to the barn, but it leads you to the sky, which I like. Anyway, I'm just, this is something I do every edit, is just shape the light a little bit with masks. And that to me is no different, just because I've added textures, no different. I still want to shape the light with mask and play a little bit with color as well. So I've completed that, and now I'm gonna go to Accent AI, which I love to do, and what I wanna do is pop some of that center area. So I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna make a, a fairly wide uh, radial, something about like that, maybe a little bit wider even, and then I'm gonna give that Accent AI, and I'm gonna go pretty high, uh, much higher than I would normally go in a photo, and I'm going to about 50 here. I don't always recommend doing that in a regular edit, but with a texture, I mean, all bets are off, right? It's already an art piece because clearly there's not texture like that in this guy. But I'm just brightening that center area, giving a little bit better visibility to the barn, the path, that sort of thing. So that's what that looks like. And now I'm gonna jump in and do a little bit of color grading. So my first step is gonna be color harmony. And I'm gonna add brilliance because I'm gonna pop this thing a little bit. Uh, so like a nine or 10, but I'm actually gonna cool it off a little bit. I got a lot of warm colors. And so I wanna bring up some of those blues. In split color warmth, I'm gonna give the warm colors a tiny boost. And I'm gonna take the cooled colors down a pretty good amount, like a negative 30. So I'm getting some, some pretty intense colors here. And then I'm actually gonna go into the shadows component of the uh, color balance, which I love. And I'm gonna give the blue a little boost, like a 10 or 11, something like that. Now, when you play with textures and color and stuff like that, I find myself going sometimes a little bit past where I would go in reality because it's, it's fun. It's a texture. It's already not real, so why not have more fun with it? Uh, and then I'm going to go into color, and I am going to do a little bit of a fix here, and I'm going to go into saturation and pull down the yellow, and I'm going to do like a negative 30-something, so something about like that, and pull down the green a little bit as well. This is primarily impacting the foreground grass. It feels like it's a little too much, uh, and I don't want to distract the viewer from kind of the texture and, and the scene by having too much color in the foreground. I tend to try to keep my colors a little bit under control, except maybe in some areas. In this case, the texture in the sky is getting a lot of color. So that's before, and that's after, a little bit more muted in the foreground. And then the last thing I'd really want to do is come in, I want to brighten that barn a little bit. So I'm going to get an object select mask and it just starts figuring out objects in the, uh, in the photo and it doesn't really recognize the entire barn it seems. So I'm going to go ahead and click around until I can get all of this barn captured. All I'm going to do is lift the exposure. So I just want to brighten that barn a little bit. So something about like that, just to give it a little bit better visibility. And then you've got an art piece, if you will, where you've combined the different layers with the different textures and all that sort of stuff. This is my interpretation of a scene. You can, of course, do anything that you want. And that's the beauty and really the fun of having textures and being able to do the merge layers in Luminar because now my edits can just apply to this combined photo instead of the, you know, individually having to apply them across multiple images or exporting that, re-importing it, and doing it that way. But I started with a fairly bland scene, cool sky, but not really super exciting. Turned it into something a bit more artistic and fun and different. And it's really because of the textures and the ability to merge them that gives me so much capability to quickly edit, color grade, and apply all these textures and have a lot of fun with it. And that's what that was all about, my friends. Hopefully it gives you some ideas. Check out my incredibly cheap, for the, for the short time, it's not gonna be like that forever, but incredibly cheap, but I think fun and interesting texture pack that's available on my website, again, at the link below. I'll be back soon with more videos. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And until next time, my friends, I will see you then, and adios.